Hello everybody, my name is Billy and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Azure search and we're going to follow along this tutorial to set it up with the C-Sharp SDK. And if you don't know what Azure search is, it's basically a platform as a service for Lucient. Um, it's comparable to Elasticsearch, Solar or Amazon Cloud Search. So let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is actually go to our Azure portal. We're going to create a new resource and we're going to search for Azure Search. Okay, this is what you'll be looking for. You click Create. And you can choose your resource group. So it doesn't matter if it's in your Linux or your Windows resource group. Um, it will work for both. And then this, you need to give it a service name. I'm going to just give it this name since I know that's unique. You'll need to choose your region. I'm in Canada Central and the pricing tier. I'm going to choose the free one. Um, it gives you three indexes, three indexers, and a size of 50 megabytes. So an index is basically an instance of a database. So if you want to have a database for a category of data that you have, you'll want to just use one index for that. And an indexer is basically something that will automatically grab data and put it into your index. So they have indexers for SQL, Azure SQL, um, Cosmos DB, Blob. So you can set those up and follow the other tutorials. So I'm going to choose the free one and we're going to go with this. And click preview and create. Wait for this to validate and then you want to click create. And we'll just give this a moment to finish. Okay, so my application has completed and deployed. So if you just click into this, it's the standard looking blade. You have the service name, you have usage here, the number of indexes, indexers. So you can kind of just keep that in mind. Your keys are here. Uh, we're going to go to the tutorial and just kind of follow along what it has to say now. First thing we want to do is download the sample application. Open this and the one we're going to be working with is the quick start app. So open this in Visual Studio. And I'm just going to quickly go over the side of what uh, the tutorial is about. And then we're just going to dive into the code and I'm just going to show you inside Visual Studio itself. We're going to get the keys and the URLs to access so that we have our configuration set up. This tells you to download NuGet. Uh, we're going to actually create the index. We're going to upload some documents and we're going to run some queries on it. OK, so let's move on over to Visual Studio. So once you've downloaded the solution, open it up in Visual Studio and you should see something like this. What we're going to do is first take a look at hotel and address. So these are the models that it's going to be shaped and basically going to be your index. So your hotel, it's a simple POCO with a bunch of attribute decorators um, you can see here. And also your address, which is a object, is also decorated with this. So you can get as complex as you want. And let's take a look at the hotel object. You can see you need a key and then you can do things like is filterable. So I have a quick thing to kind of explain what is uh, filterable, searchable. Searchable is actually if it can be discovered. So it's pretty obvious um, is sortable and is facetable. So we're going to go back to the browser and I'm going to show you a quick diagram. OK, so this is the diagram I wanted to show you. It's from a blog that I found, and I will put that in the link description below if you want to read that. But basically, you have a pretty standard shopping website. You have categories, which are equivalent to indexes. You have filters, which are going to represent the is filtered. You have sorting, which is is sorting, and facets, which is is facetable. And first, let's start off with filters. So filters are very simple. You have a clause you want to kind of go by. You have a date you want to have. Um, sorting is also pretty simple. You want to ascend or descend by dates, amounts, relevancy in this case. And then facets are kind of the more complicated way of thinking about things. It's almost like a aggregate of a column in a SQL Server kind of sense. You're going to have a group by and a count, essentially. And I'll show you that when we go back to the tutorial because they have a hotel with a bunch of tags. So you can see that later. And back to the model, one of the last things you'll see is for languages, you can have an English or a French uh, analyzer for them. Oh, let's close this and actually talk about these little helper 
what they've done here is just overrided the two strings so that when we do a search and the value returns not empty or null, then we can actually print it on the screen. So that's just what these helpers are. So when we go into the program, we can actually see what it does. So let's start setting up everything we need to get this working. So what we're going to do is since it's going to read from the app setting, let's fill in all of the missing ones. So we need our service name. And in this case, it's going to be Billy Tech. And we're going to need to grab the admin key and the index name. So the index name is whatever you want it to be. They've already populated it with the hotel quick start. So I'm going to grab my admin key right now. Go here and I'm going to click keys. Grab the primary key. And I'm going to just paste that in here. And I'm also going to do one other uh, refactoring step, which I'm going to have a query key because in one of their other tutorials, they've actually done this, but in this one, they have not. And I just wanted to show you uh, what that is about. So you basically want to have a query key so that whenever you're using your index, it doesn't actually have the ability to delete or do any of that stuff. So you would have one key to do the setup and then use this subsequent key to kind of manage all your queries afterwards. So close this and back to the program here. And what it's going to do is firstly do a delete index if exist. And you can see just a exist and delete just so that when you do a create, it'll do the cleanup for you. And then let's look into here. So the create index just needs an index name. And we know that's going to be hotel dash quick start. And it's going to build our model. So that's the object that we had here. And then afterwards, it's just going to create that definition for us. And back here and then what it's going to do afterwards is it's going to upload a bunch of data so remember if you have your indexers like your azure search and or azure sql indexers you don't have to worry about this step but in terms of learning what it does it's very easy to actually see all the models that it's going to try to upload so let's go back and then the final thing we're going to do is we're going to run a bunch of different queries. So you can see that as it would go along. So I'm going to put a debugger here just so we can watch that go. And we're going to go to the very top and we're going to actually just run this now. Actually, so before we begin, I'm going to actually utilize that query um, API key that we had earlier. I'm just going to copy this and just start renaming things to index. So we're going to create a index client. And that means that the object has to be an index client. It's just a var and the return has to be an index client. And I'm just going to leave these names kind of the same just so we don't have to waste time renaming everything. And the only additional field we need in our index client is the index name. So I'm going to scroll here. I'm going to grab this index name. I'm going to pass it in here. And we're going to just pass it here like this. And that's perfect. So we're just going to take this new method that we have. I'm going to replace uh, the one we used to run the query. You're going to still need the admin key to do the uploads. But the query ones, we can use this. So we're going to do that. And we're going to just pass in the configuration. Perfect. So now we have everything going. So let's execute. I have a debugger on delete. Let's run this application. So first thing it's going to do is create the service client and use that service client to see if we have an existing index. And if we do, which I have ran this before, it will do the delete command. So let's go out of this. And then it's going to use that same service client to take our hotel model to create an index. And then from there, it's going to upload our documents. So it's going to use that um, service client to grab an index client from our index name to upload all of these documents. So it's going to create an action and this action contains all of the data. Then it will submit that and give it a two second wait to kind of wait for the index to happen. All right. And the final thing it will do is actually just run some queries for you guys. So now that everything has been indexed, I'm just going to step through this. We will actually now be able to run queries for everything. So first query it's going to run is search for the term Atlanta and return the full document. 
because we didn't specify any like selects here, like down here, it will return everything for you. We do that and then we print out the results. So I'm going to just display this and you can see all of the information is actually displayed. And that is because of the two string. So if we step into this, you can see that all it does is goes like this and then console and prints out the document. Okay, and next query it's going to run is it's going to search for the term Atlanta and return some field. And the fields it wants to return because there's a select here is hotel names, the tags, and the address. So let's let that run and see the results. So you can see the hotel name, the tags, and the address. All right, next query. You can see here, it's going to now search for two words. It's going to look for restaurant and Wi-Fi and return back the hotel name, description, and tags. I'm just going to just hide this a bit so you guys can see. So restaurant and Wi-Fi. So the comma indicates the end. And same thing. All those informations are printed out and you can see two results. All right, so next query. It's going to do a filter so you can see the greater than four. So it's going to look for hotels with greater than four. And this star indicates that you don't want to search by any terms. And you can see this and this is the results. Two of these have a result greater than uh, four stars. Finally, run this and you're going to see that it's going to search or it's going to get two results and it's going to order by the rating. And it's going to look for the word boutique. All right, and there you go. So let's just let that end. I'm going to stop it there. And I'm going to now modify the query a bit so that you guys can kind of see the facetable uh, property. So I'm going to choose um, this one, I guess. Just um, this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go facets equals uh, new uh, object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do it based on the tags. So I'm going to pass it in here, go to this, and we're going to look for this word tags. I'm going to place that in here. And then I'm going to debug this and see the results with you guys. So let's run that. I'm going to remove that and just let it like fly through until we get to our results. I'm going to wait two seconds for it to be indexed. And once we get here, so now we specified facet to be tags. Let's do that. And we're going to see the results. And now you're going to see facets count one. And you're going to see tags and tags will have three. And you're going to see what it has. So tags are air conditioning bar and continental breakfast and you're going to see there's one here one here and there's one more here so if we change the model itself we can actually start playing with this so if you add more air conditioning tags you're going to see that those counts for like air conditioning will become two or three depending on what you change it to so i'm just going to exit out of this and i just want to lastly go over some quick documentation that will help you guys learn a little bit more. Okay, so back to the documentation, you're going to navigate to the left hand side, and we're going to see references, and we're going to look for OData language reference. And here, you're going to learn actually learn how to write those queries that we use to do the searches. So you're going to see the filters, the order buys, the selects, you're going to see the conditional statements for the filters equals not equal greater than less than um, you're going to see for this one collections. So if you have a rather than a just a child object, you have a collection of child objects, you're going to see how you actually filter through those child objects. So take a look at this. I'll put this in the description below, but um, this is very helpful to kind of figure out what to do. And the next one you're going to want to look at is how to guide. You're going to look at development and the dot uh, develop in dot net or whatever languages. The dot net one I looked at, um, it has a link to the repo. And the repo will actually have a lot more different examples that you can kind of work through. Um, I have the repo up here. 
So you can kind of see the how to, which is a quick started. You can see the autocomplete. You can see the indexers. And they'll kind of go through how to go through more examples. And even in the existing repo that we were in earlier, there's actually a bunch of other examples there. So make sure you guys take a look at those. But continue learning on this because this is not a simple topic. Just to get started is relatively easy, but to kind of dive deep into it is kind of a whole specialization on its own. And that's end of this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope you guys found it useful. I wanted to just keep this as short and concise as possible to show you some of their documentations that they had to just get started. I myself am not an expert in these search technologies, so I hope this was helpful for you to kind of get started as it was for me.